What's going on guys? LSU Recruiting here. Thank you guys for watching today's video. Make sure if you haven't already, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and check us out on all other social media platforms. Alright guys, uh, another tough Sunday morning. Um, LSU drops the game last night um, to Auburn. 24-19 was the final score. Uh, LSU drops a 3-2 and on the season. Um, this was a really tough game to swallow, um, looking back, and uh, the feeling is is uh, is gut wrenching after after kind of rewatching it a little bit, and uh, it was a it was just a tough night uh, in Tiger Stadium for LSU and LSU fans. Um, a game LSU probably deserved to win was leading the whole game until the fourth quarter, um, and just fell short at the end there. Um, a couple stats from the game. Um, Auburn outgained LSU by about 100 yards with 453 yards of offense to LSU's 358. Um, and like I said, the biggest, the big stat that's going to be pretty much a, a weekly thing now is, is the Russian yards. The Russian yards were not even close and uh, in the in the fourth quarter there that really was the big difference in the game where Auburn was starting to get a good feel for the running game and uh, and really just took control of the game in the fourth quarter and just dominated um, dominated time of possession and uh, and the tempo of how the game was being played in the fourth quarter um, but this game this game was lost way before the fourth quarter even when LSU was winning um, there's no, there's no sh way to really put it other than the missed opportunities for LSU just couldn't get out of their own way. I mean, when you drive inside the 25 four times and have to kick four field goals, um, there you're not gonna have very much success. Um, so we're gonna kind of break down, go through the game summary a little bit. Um, you come out, uh, great energy. Uh, Tiger Stadium's rocking, man. It's Death Valley night game. Um, couldn't be a better atmosphere at kickoff, and uh, uh, you came out with your hair on fire, man. Defense comes out, gets a big stop on the first drive. Bo Nick starts for um, Auburn. That kind of put away all the T.J. Finley talk. Um, Bo Nix came out, had a decent drive going in the first foot, but they kind of stalled out there, and uh, defense got a big stop. Um, and then LSU, man, gets the ball, first play, Kayshawn Butte, 55 yards. Um, and LSU really just ran down the field on him uh, uh, with procedure penalty, or not the procedure penalty, with the holding call and the bad snap. LSU ended up racking up over 140 yards of offense on their first possession, which is absolutely wild. Uh, Mac Johnson made a beautiful throw to the corner pylon. Um, to Kayshawn Butte dropped it in the bucket between two defenders um, and then that was that was the offense for the night that one first possession man then um, so then after that you get you get Auburn gets the ball back and they miss a field goal right um, momentum kill right there um, then you go down you kick a field goal 10 plays I believe this is the drive where you had them fourth and two or no, this is the this is drive where we take a sack, right? Max Johnson, we're inside the Auburn twenty. Uh, Max Johnson gets sacks, kind of puts us handcuffs us in the drive. He scrambles for a couple yards on third down, uh, makes it th uh, fourth and manageable. K. George kicks a field goal. All right, not not the worst case scenario right there. You're up ten seven, but then Auburn gets the back, ball back, and this is when T. J. Finley comes in the game. They have the one big pass play for 35 yards, and then uh, you can just see the difference between Bo Nix and T.J. Finley. That with an offensive line that's not great, um, T.J. Finley's going to struggle with the pass rush, and he's he's just um, he's just too immobile. We, I mean, we've seen how Bo Nix, uh, what Bo Nix did to us last night, um, as far as scrambling in the pocket and making people miss and stuff like that. So. So Auburn gets the ball back. They have the big play, and they kind of get the penalty, the 15-yard penalty, and they stall out and have to punt. Um, so that being said, and then this is where things start getting a little hairy for 
for LSU, right? So you have the good drive. You're driving down the field. You get to the Auburn six-yard line. You get to the Auburn six-yard line, right? It's fourth and two, and I love this call from Coach O. Fourth and two, kill shot. It's already 10-0. to zero. You get this first down, you get in the end zone, you make it 17-0, to zero, and Auburn goes away quicker than they came. And what happens is poor, piss-poor management, all right? We can't get the play called in time. We can't get the right personnel on the field, all right? You bring in Jumbo Pack, you have to call a timeout. You burn a timeout, fourth and two. That's not even the big deal, right? I, I'd rather you be more prepared on big plays like that. You call the timeout, and then you come out, and your Jumbo Package tight end, Charles Turner, comes in, and he jumps off sides. And you back up fourth and seven. So now you've wasted a timeout, and you didn't have the personnel in there. You bring in personnel who has one job, and he jumps off sides. So, that being said, you have to kick another field goal. Now it's 13-0, to and Auburn's feeling like, hey, we're kind of containing this team. If we can just get a little momentum, and then that's when the Bo Nick show happened. All right, Auburn has a good drive going, um, and then it's fourth and two. All right, LSU has them in the backfield wrapped up. Bo Nix escapes play scramble drill tight ends wide open back in the end zone touchdown Auburn it's 13-7 and then at this point I'm like all right this is where all right LSU if they want to continue to dominate this game they have to go down and score well here comes Auburn they force their first punt all right so Auburn gets the ball back with a little bit of time left about three minutes they have a 13 play 62 yard drive only ends in a field goal, but now at the end of halftime, you're sitting here with you're sitting here with a field goal, and it's thirteen to ten. <clears throat> You've been getting dominated all first half, and then you walk into the locker room. My buddy told me he said, "Man, Auburn's got to be feeling great about themselves." And I'm like, "What do you mean they're losing?" And he said, "Man, it's ten to th it's thirteen to ten. Like they've been getting dominated this whole first half." And, and they're only down three points. So, I mean, they couldn't have responded any better with with the LSU miscues in the red zone and then coming back and getting that big touchdown and then driving down the field and getting that field goal at the end of half. That was big for them. So 13-10, to 10, coming out of halftime. All right. So LSU comes out first play or gets the ball, start of the uh, second half. They have a nice drive going, another nice drive. They get down to the Auburn five-yard line. The Auburn five-yard line. So this is the second time they reached. I'm not even sure exactly what happened on this drive. But they get to the Auburn five-yard line, five yard line <clears throat> have to kick a 22-yard field goal. I believe this is the one where they get the holding call. Where the holding call on um, on Deculus, where it, it it set them back like third and goal from the twenty, and so so they have that drive. They have to kick the field goal, and then Auburn gets the ball back, comes down, misses a field goal. All right, so you're kind of feeling good. You have the block field goal by Jay Ward. Your momentum's there. This is where this is the kill shot time. All right, this is where all right we're done effing around. This is the drive. We go down, score a touchdown, and LSU goes down. Eleven plays, only gains twenty-nine yards. I believe this is actually this is the one where uh, Max Johnson get they get actually this is the one where they get called for the holding. They have it at the Auburn. They complete the pass right to Brian Thomas on the holding call. That would have been a first down from the ten. They get called for holding. Backs him up to the thirty-one. And then the very next play, Max Johnson gets sacked, fumbles, and then Cade York bombs a 51-yard field goal, and you have to settle for three more points. And at this point, it's 19 to 10. All right. And and at this point, I walked into my house and I told this guy, I said, "Hey, tell me right now that this ain't gonna come back and bite us in the butt, because I can feel it. I can just feel it. You don't settle for five or four field goals." 
on great drives and not get have to pay for it at some point. And unfortunately, after that time frame, that was the LSU's last score of the game. Um, Auburn goes down, scores a touchdown. They really get the running game going. Um, they go down, score a touchdown, make it 19-17. And then the fourth quarter belonged to the defenses, man. A, the fourth quarter was three LSU three and out, Auburn three and out punt, LSU six plays, gets the one first down. Uh, Max Johnson misses the throw to Jack Besh, overthrows him just a little bit, misses that throw. They punt after that. Um, then Auburn gets the ball, finally goes down, scores a touchdown. Then obviously in the last possession, um, Keishon Butte has the bobble out of bounds, which is a tough break uh, for your best player. Um, can't fault him one bit. It was a poorly thrown ball. He had to turn all kinds of ways, but unfortunately, he, that's a catch. He's probably coming down with nine times out of ten. Um, but it's just unfortunate he didn't that time. And then obviously on fourth down, Max throws the interception. Um, so going over the game plan like that, let's talk about Let's talk about the problems that are rearing their ugly head once again. Um, in the fourth quarter, there, when you're up 19 to zero, um, I'm I'm a firm believer right now that running the ball is not our identity. All right, I'm not gonna be the guy who's gonna sit here and say run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. You can't, you can't do it. Now, one thing I'm disappointed in is that Corey Connor is not getting more touches. The man had five carries for 22 yards last night. All right, uh, Ty Davis Price had five carries for 18 yards, so not big of a, not that big of a drop off. Only four yard difference between the two. So your running backs, your two good running backs, were averaging about four yards a carry. I mean, so on a night where Auburn is making the adjustments at halftime that they did, they started rushing three, sometimes even rushing two dropping eight to nine and you're not making the adjustments back on offense saying hey if they're going to rush three we're just going to hand it off and get four yards and I think as bad as LSU's offensive line if five dudes can't block three or block two I mean and we can't get three to four yards of carry and get a couple first downs and just just kind of eat away at the clock a little bit more um Obviously, y'all know when you throw passes like this and you get incompletions, the clock is never moving. So, when you go three and out, it, it takes like 40 seconds off the clock, if that. So, I mean, you're really not killing any time. Um, and that's really what ended up damning LSU in the end, um, is the fact that Auburn at the end of the game. What what surprised me, the, mo well, the biggest surprise to me out of the whole game was that Auburn didn't run the ball. Auburn came out in the first half and didn't run the ball. They couldn't. LSU's defense was stuffing it, and uh, really it was just Bo Nix making plays. I mean, all, uh, LSU's defense is not to blame here. LSU's defense played their butts off last night. They gave the offense the ball three times with a chance to put the game away in the fourth quarter, and the offense went three and out twice and then had a six-play punt one time. And then obviously the last drive of the game was the interception. So your defense really did the job for you last night to win the game. It's just a matter of, it's the same thing. It's the looking over to the sideline, not getting the plays called, having to burn timeouts off a kickoff, um, the in inability to run the ball just occasionally, just to see, just to keep them honest, man, and uh, just to make them think that hey, these these guys might run the ball. Maybe get you bring up another guy into the box. And that clears up more passing th uh, passing lanes for you. And the most disappointing part about the offense in the second half was Kayshawn Butte didn't get the ball. How do you how do you go the whole second half and this man ain't got the ball? You didn't he didn't get a catch until the the last drive of the game, man. Like how does that happen? I mean, you you have the one of the best players, if not the best wide receiver in the SEC. Man, had 100 yards on the first drive of the game, man. First drive of the game. And and we're sitting here right now. Let me let me pull up this the LSU box score. Let's see. 
Keishon Butte had three catches for 100 yards on the first drive of the game. The rest of the game, he had three catches for 28 yards. Three catches. Jack Besh had seven for 84. Jack Besh was a third down monster last night. Anytime they needed to convert a third down, they was looking for number 80. And that's a great thing to see. I'm so happy that that's a thing. But there comes to a point where I don't care if Auburn's double teaming him. I don't care. You, as an offensive play caller, have to design plays to get your best players the ball. How many plays last year did Alabama draw up to make sure that Devontae Smith got the ball in his hands? How many plays did LSU draw up in 2019 to get the ball in Jamar Chase's hands? To get the ball in Justin Jefferson's hands? All right. How many plays for Terrence Marshall last year before he opted out? How many plays for Terrence Marshall like eight? It's time to get six the ball because we need to start moving the ball and getting first downs. Well, that's what should have happened last night, and it didn't. All right, every three and out drive, Keishon Booty had zero targets. Zero targets. That's no. That's not even thrown in his direction. He wasn't even on the field on the fourth and two when they – in the first half on fourth and two when they had a chance to put the game away and they had the procedure penalty he wasn't even on the field now tell me on one of the biggest plays of the game how you don't have your best player on the field that's coaching man that's coaching and I'm not sure what George Munoz does all right if he does anything but there's no excuse that that kind of personnel is on the field at that time there's no excuse for it man there's no excuse for Jake Pete's not saying a I have this guy on my team that can make me look really good, and I'm refusing to give him the ball. I don't care. I really don't care. I didn't look at that in depth on what Auburn was doing to try to contain Keishon Boutte because they can't do it. I hate to break it to y'all. Ain't nobody can guard the man. All right? You don't think at the beginning of the game they said, hey, we probably need to stop one. And what did one do? He went right down the field for 99 yards touchdown. Because you can't stop him. You design plays to get him the ball. Alright? And then another factor in the game that I think is really overlooked is drop passes again. And y'all are probably thinking, like, who dropped pass? Deion Smith, Max Johnson in the first half, throws two balls into the end zone. Deion Smith on a slant. Ball hits him in his hands. Defensive player makes a decent play. Ball hits him in his hands. Consider that a drop. All right, in the end zone, touchdown, you have to kick a field goal. A couple drives later, Max Johnson throws a beautiful ball to the right corner, corner pylon, and he has to make one of those where you have to keep your feet in. Ball hits him dead in his hands, dead in his hands, and drops it, touchdown. You come down with those two balls, that's two touchdowns, game's over. Game's over. Auburn's not scoring. Auburn's not scoring that many points. I hate to break it to y'all. Auburn is not scoring that many points. It's not happening. At that point, the game would have been over. Bo Nix would have been irrelevant. They would have had to put TJ Finley in to try to get something going. And the game would have been over. LSU cruises to the victory. We're moving on 4-1 and one in the top 25. This was a big game for LSU, man. LSU could have reasserted itself back into a, a we're, we're not as bad as y'all thought category. Maybe not. Obviously, they're not going to be national contenders. That's an unrealistic thing to say. But they could have reasserted themselves as, hey, we're, we're still in competition for the second best team in the Western Division. And it's true. They still could be. After last night, my thoughts don't change. They still could be the second best team in the West. We don't know. If they go and beat Ole Miss, I mean, Ole Miss has flaws. A&M damn sure got flaws. Uh, Auburn's going to slip up again. I mean, Auburn's not a great team. Um, so, I mean, the West is really wide open. I'm not an Arkansas believer either. So, I mean, you, you LSU had every game on their schedule except for Alabama. They have a chance to win. Kentucky beat Florida last night. Play Kentucky next week. I think LSU is going to go in and beat Kentucky. Coming off a loss, I think LSU will go in there, beat Kentucky. Kentucky's going to be a top 20 team, 
I don't know if they'll be top 15, but they might be top 20. They're 5-0. and Beat a top 10 team. So, I mean, who knows? They might be top 15. And it's going to be a big-time atmosphere, and LSU needs to come out with their hair on fire just like they did Mississippi State and come out and shut them down because Kentucky's not that good either. Kentucky just was in a dogfight with South Carolina who almost lost Troy today. Uh, so there's a lot of flaws with a lot of teams in this conference right now besides Georgia and Alabama. And thank God we ain't got to play Georgia in an Alabama game. I mean, that's just a continuing year-in, year-out thing. We're just getting our ass cut by then. So, um, and uh, so that's just, I mean, those two games would be washes. But everybody else in this conference is beatable every week, including LSU. LSU has flaws. Florida's got flaws. Florida can't fucking throw the ball. So, I mean, here here we are, and uh, and we're sitting at 3-2, uh, and two, and I just got a feeling it's going to be a roller coaster ride again um, this year. But hopefully LSU fans get a good perspective this year, man, and uh, realize that this winning stuff ain't easy. And uh, you get a... Uh, Get that bad taste in your mouth every every Sunday morning and uh, every Saturday uh, after a loss, and uh, remember how good it feels to win. Cause I think we kind of took it for granted for a little bit there. I know personally I did, and uh, last year really humbled me, and this year did the same exact thing, man. Uh, uh, I I bleed purple and gold, man. But sometimes you just gotta be a realist and say, hey, this this uh this team that that 2019 team was the outlier, and it's uh. You can't really compare anybody to the 2019 team, and uh, it's probably never going to be like that again. Let's be honest here. It's, it's, it, there's probably never going to be a team at LSU that's going to be that good again. So um, just mentally preparing for that and uh, getting ready for the rest of the season, man. Uh, it was nice to see at LSU Stadium packed to the to the max. There was a couple empty seats. Um, kind of disappointed the guys started clearing out and uh, – end of the fourth quarter, or not the end of the fourth quarter, but uh, like start of the fourth quarter, the place kind of cleared out, but that's more on LSU and not the fans. I understand that traffic is a a pain in the butt there, and uh, it's a late game, and people are just going to watch it at home, you know. So I kind of understand that. It's just uh, – just, it, it was just glad to see normal football back, man. That was the first game at Tiger Stadium that really felt like a LSU game. Um, since that 2019 uh, Texas A&M game, so it was nice to see. And um, I'm looking forward to next week, man. I'll be at I'll be at the Kentucky game. Um, I might do a little video from the Kentucky game, see what what's going on up there. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing this team in person for the first time, and then excited just to go see a college football game, man. It's my first college football game since 2019, so. I'm just looking forward to that, man. But if you guys like the video today, man, make sure you like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, check me out on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll catch you guys later at the end of this week um, with the Kentucky preview. Uh, thank you guys for watching, man.